Hello everyone, Derek here. About nine months ago, we bought the Fuji X-T100 to use as our main travel and vlogging camera. Since then, we've taken it on a bunch of trips and I've found many things I like about the camera, but also a few notable things that really frustrate me. This video is about those. So let me start by saying, overall, I love that I bought into the Fuji X-Mount ecosystem. The cameras and lenses are small and incredibly capable, and I generally feel the X-T100 was a good way to get my feet wet without spending too much money. But there are definitely some flaws with the camera, and though Fuji has released a number of firmware updates since they released the camera, they haven't fully addressed three pretty critical things that I feel would be really easy to fix through firmware updates and would make the X-T100 even better of a value. The first thing is the frankly sucky continuous autofocus. With the release of the X-T3 and very soon the X-T30, they've proven that they can do amazing continuous autofocus. And you'd think since the X-T100 has a bunch of phase detection points, they would be able to port the new algorithm to it in some form. The most frustrating part about it is the face tracking seems like it's able to detect faces pretty well, but in my testing, it takes the camera about five to 10 seconds to actually change and lock focus after it has identified a face. Then, once the face leaves the frame or gets obstructed, it won't revert back to the previous focus point, even though it appears like it will. The good thing is once it finds a face and locks focus, it seems to stay on it pretty well as long as the face doesn't move around in the frame too much or too fast. The second thing is the absolutely atrocious microphone preamp. I don't really know how they accomplished it, but the amount of noise this preamp produces is pretty impressive in a bad way. At first, I thought maybe it was just boosting the gain because the signal from my mic was too low, but even when I tried a powered mic with a much hotter signal, it still had a ton of noise. Here's a quick comparison between the Rode Video Micro, which is what we use while traveling, into the internal preamp, the Rode Video Micro using an external recorder, and finally, the internal microphone. This is an audio test of the Rode Video Micro on the Fuji X-T100 using the internal preamp, and here is the noise level. This is an audio test of the Rode Video Micro running through a Sony UX560 audio recorder, and here's the noise. This is an audio test of the Fujifilm X-T100's internal microphone running through its internal preamp, and here's the noise. As you can hear, when using the Rode Video Micro with the internal preamp, I don't have to boost the signal at all for the noise to be easily audible. And when editing, it then requires me to add an inordinate amount of noise reduction just to get it to a level that's even partially acceptable. Now, I don't know for sure if this is something they can fix in firmware, and it may just be that the preamp really is that shitty, but if that's the case, it makes you wonder if they ever actually tested it before releasing the camera. The third thing is the complete lack of any control over the image for video recording. Even the most basic point and shoot like this Canon G7X Mark II will have some control over simple things like sharpness and saturation or color, but confusingly the X-T100 lacks even those. The best you can do is change the color profile, but really all that's doing is putting a different filter over top the already over sharpened footage. This again is especially frustrating because pretty much every other Fuji camera has those options. I understand the X-T100 is supposed to be their entry level camera, but if they're going to market it to vloggers, which they seem like they are since it's the only camera in their lineup with a front facing screen, it's quite a big omission and something they could easily remedy with a firmware update. So that's pretty much it. While I generally enjoy using the X-T100, those three things are definitely some things that they could improve upon to make it an even better camera. And with all that said, since I'm now a proud member of the Fuji tribe, I pre-ordered the X-T30 and I'm excited to see how well it works for travel and vlogging. It definitely looks like it strikes the perfect balance between price and features. And once I've had a bit of time with it, I'll definitely be giving it a full review. So subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post it. And until next time, it's us against the world. Goodbye.